Landlord is jealous of my income. Raises my rent $500. I screw him years later for $20,000. This is so satisfying. I feel like it's everyone's bad landlord fantasy. Well, with the name Hank all I can picture is that D guy from Breaking Bad. Maybe he quit law enforcement and decided to go into real estate. No. No he didn't. Well, I mean he did get into some real estate. Just not working in it. I see what you did there. The only question I have is how did you manage to walk around the office with a huge justice boner for the rest of the day without offending anyone? I stumbled upon this subreddit a few days ago and said justice boner has been ray popping ever since in anticipation of writing down this story. So glad I got to share it. The justice boner never truly goes flaccid. At least not a justice boner of this caliber. Well, you don't have to like it, Hank. You just have to accept it. Goodbye. It's amazing how much justice can feel like fresh air sometimes. This is the first thing I have read on this subreddit and I love it. Got his ass handed to him on a plate. You don't have to love it, you just have to read it. Don't just stare at it, Sabrina. Eat it. Many states prohibit discrimination against source of income. Just for your information for anyone else in the same situation. Did you ever hear the tragedy of Canada the Dragon Lowly? I thought not. It's not a story Sagiri fans would tell you. It's a legend of the Lolicans. Canada the Dragon Lowly was a gothic lowly from the other world. So powerful and cute she could use the force to influence the other school kids to win sports festivals. She had such a knowledge of the lowly side that she could even keep the ones she cared about from growing up. She could actually save people from growing up. The lowly side is a pathway to many abilities some consider to be immoral. What happened to her? She became so powerful. The only thing she was afraid of was growing up, which eventually of course, she did. Unfortunately, she taught her apprentice everything she knew. Then her apprentice made her a woman in her sleep. Ironic. She could save others from growing up, but not herself. Edit op post was restored. Why did op delete? The post was removed, not deleted. I assume the mods didn't like something about it or it broke a rule. Really would like to know why it was removed. All names were changed. No so crazy increase with month to month rates. Oh man. I really liked the part where he removed. That's the best part. Month to month contracts are always more expensive though. 50% is high, but not unheard of if it's been a few years since a rent adjustment. Hanks a mod. Why is every freaking post being removed? Message the moderators and let them know they're doing a terrible job. Then unsubscribe. As a landlord, agent I wholeheartedly enjoyed this. Why are you too many heads out there trying to get over on people? Glad to heard a landlord's take on this. I'm getting some comments saying I'm the ALA, because it's hard to lease apartments and month to month deserves a 50% premium. I may be the ALA, but 50% still seems obscene. A premium maybe. 50% is usury. In a situation like that I would have increased to what I thought was market value probably $100 a month from your story, and asked if I could show the place before you moved out with advance notice. Source. I am also a landlord. Great story, but I feel like it's worth noting. A 50% per month increase to stay 2 months extra isn't actually that unheard of. When I ended each of my last 2 leases, a 12 month renewal would have run a 8% increase, but a 4 month extension was closer to 40%, and a 50% higher month to month was baked into the contract as well if we overstayed without renewing. Factor in how the rental market can change, 2 months might have been August to October, which is a big difference in rental demand, and I think you may be off base in assuming the $500 was because of your income. Ever read a post that's only 26 minutes old and realize it's going to go to the front page? All you have to do for that sweet sweet karma is comment something funny. I hope I don't screw it up. You know when people make an edit, comment about well there goes my inbox? Um, it's kinda awesome. Thanks for the appreciation. Bring on the down votes, but there are some fundamental economics that might paint you in a villainous light. I'm not accusing you of being one, 
but I wanted to lay out some fundamentals that might point to an alternate conclusion. I can see how you might not see it that way, but everything that Hank did seems not unreasonable, aside from constantly being an irritant about your salary, and maybe not returning your $300 security deposit. More on the deposit later. The opportunity cost perspective. Depending on the time of the year, two month extension may easily cost him $1000 or more in rent. Consider the following. Peak rental season is May to September. If your two month extension moved him out of that time frame, he may have to take a minor haircut to the market just to land a deal. Assuming simple math with wholly made up numbers. In May September, he could lease the apps at $1,150 for a one year or more term. In September, February, when things are really bad, he may only be able to get $1,025. You mentioned he listed it for only $150 over what you were paying, and he couldn't even land that. Over one year, he'd already be taking a haircut of $1,500 and only making back $1,000 from your 2 month bump. Additionally, he's now outside of that peak cycle unless the next renter wants a 9 15 18 month lease. Made up numbers, again. You could have, theoretically, cost him in the long run, despite paying $500 more per month. Defining the market, you're paying for convenience. The market for a 2 month lease has different pricing than the market for a 12 month lease. $500 a month wasn't unfair, as the market, that's you, accepted it. A market rate was whatever you'd be willing to pay. You always had the option of temporary housing, moving in with a friend, moving to a hotel and putting everything in storage etc. So long as you accepted it, the market was defined and fulfilled. Was it price gorging? Sure. An eye for an eye, the golden rule not a fundamental principle of economics, but more the golden rule. You took a hit of $1000, which you were obviously capable of paying again, you always had the option not to. You ensured that this person did not make $20,000, which is his living. The deposit. $300 doesn't go a long way. It is common practice to do a walkthrough in rentals. You seem like a savvy guy, so it holds that you might have done such a thing. Noting imperfections like messed up floorboards, mirrors with peeling corners lights that just don't work. You should have presented this, and that your unit matched all the same things at move out so that you could have gotten your money back. He's responsible for typical wear and tear, which would include picture framing holes, maybe some light scuffing of entryways, high traffic zones, etc. You easily could have recovered this as NY is one of the most tenant favoring states in the country. I'm not here to say you're a bad guy, there are a lot of specifics missing. But do consider how from an alternate perspective there are ways that this isn't the tale of revenge, but of you being a pretty medium bad guy. Okay, I'll reply, and I appreciate your response. I don't think this matters much, but the lease was up in February and we moved out at the end of April. So he had the condo free right at peak season. Also, it was not a true month to month contract, it was just a two month extension. He could have started showing the apartment immediately and had renters ready to go on the 1st of May. In fact, I vaguely remember him showing it to people while we were still tenants, but I might be confusing that memory with another apartment. I agree with you here. The landlord priced his excessive increase pretty perfectly. We did the math at the time and the hassle of moving out and putting our stuff in storage would have been about the same price as the rent increase. I had the option. But instead I accepted his rate increase. He knew exactly what he was doing to us. Damn straight. He lost a sale because of a bad reputation. The market drives itself. But you know what. If he had been a nice person and been reasonable in his dealings with me. I would have been reasonable all those years later when Phil mentioned his name. I'm not an NY. But had the $300 deposit hit been the only issue. I doubt I would have remembered all those years later. Yes, I could have argued it and maybe gotten some money back, but I didn't at the time and I agree with you on this point. Absolutely, I was petty in the end, and it's worth considering that perhaps I am indeed the AOLA in this story. At the same time, I still think that had I been the landlord in this story, I would have been much more reasonable with my tenant.
removed. This warms my cockles. Dollar sign number 100%. Happened. Removed. Cool story. Did your lease have a holdover clause? Sometimes those clauses stipulate the amount you pay when you don't move out when your lease expires. You are paying for the flexibility and convenience. I hope you didn't F this guy over for no reason.